Okay, so now that I've downloaded and installed the WCI software, I'm going to go ahead and configure SQL Server. So we just need to do three things. We need to create the database, create a user, and then run some database scripts that were created during the installation process. So I'm going to connect to SQL Server as a, a the owner of my operating system here, and I'm going to create a new database. And I'm going to keep it simple, WCI, and I'll select all the default options for this database. And then I'm going to go ahead and into security, I'll create a new user, and I'm going to name this user WCI user. And I'll use the SQL Server authentication. And I'm going to take off the enforced password policy because I really don't care about it. And I'm going to map this user to the WCI database and as DBO. And then I'll mark them as DB owner down under here, the membership role. Click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect as the WCI user. And now that I've connected, I'm going to disconnect as the uh, admin off of my machine. So I'll disconnect. So now, as you can see, I am, as, I am connected as WCI user. Now, earlier, after I had created the, uh, done the installation and created all the SQL scripts, I moved those SQL scripts to my local machine here. So I'm just going to go ahead and open them. And as you can see, I have these tables, are the, these scripts are the ones that I need. The create table, load seed info, post install, and stored procs. There are several other SQL scripts that you'll see in the folder, and I'll show you where that is when we get over to the uh, configuration of WCI. But I'm just going to run these in the, pretty much the order that they're given, and I'm going to make sure that I run them against the WCI database. And it's relatively quick. And we're done. And now if we go into this WCI database, we'll, have, we'll see all the tables that it created. It also has a lot of default data installed with it, so we're good to go there. So that's the configuration of SQL Server. And we'll go ahead and we'll close SQL Server. Now I have my uh, Windows XP mode again, so we're going to configure uh, WCI for XP mode. But before I do, I want to show you where all those SQL Server scripts are. So it's under BEA, a LUI, and then if we go to PT Portal, you'll see a folder called SQL, and inside of that, MSSQL, and here are all the scripts for that. You don't need these if you're just doing a regular install. You need create tables, load seed, info, stored procs, a database, and then the post install MSSQL. The rest are if you're upgrading from a previous version, but we're not, so we don't need it. So let's go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. Now, we happen to have several services that were installed. So if I go into Administrative Tools and look at Services, and those services all begin with BEA, and if everything was installed correctly, you'll see all the services. So the, the configuration manages what we're going to use first, and this software right here can be stopped once everything's configured. It does not have to run. The API service will need to run while, um, while we use the software, that's, that's how the portlets can communicate back to the portal server if um, it needs additional information that it doesn't receive through the IDK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these to automatic. The automation service, also we need to have it um, started and set to automatic. Automation service runs all of our jobs for us. Um, that that will uh, do all of our set up our search indexes and everything else, and then we have our search it's already started and our cluster manager if we need to do any management. Since we don't have a cluster, we don't need this started. And our logger, I typically don't run this in development unless I know that there's a problem. So the main services we need are the API automation and search, and then when we can while we configure it, we need the configuration manager service. So let's go ahead and just close this. And let's go back to our browser. Now to access the configuration manager, 
um, you can just do HTTP, HTTPS colon slash slash localhost one two three four five and yes I want to proceed and administrator is the password <clears throat> also remember that when we installed the software we did not type in a password for the configuration manager so I'm just going to leave it blank and I'll log on in. The only thing we really need to be concerned about in this next screen is the portal configuration and we just need to tell the portal where to find uh, the database. That's, you know, that's the only thing we're going to do in this. So if I expand portal services, go to portal database, and you'll see that I have some stuff figure, configured already, but I'll just tell you I cheated. I made sure everything worked before I did the video. So our host here is 192.168.3.1, and what I've done is I've created a, um, a loopback adapter, uh, the Microsoft loopback adapter, so my XP mode can communicate with my host and I never have to change my IP address regardless of the network I may be home, whether it's my home network or my work network. My username is WCI user and my password is WCI user. And then the name of the database was WCI. Now when you install, obviously the settings here will be defaulted um, and you'll just have to type over them. So hit save and we're all set. So I'm going to close the configuration manager and I'm going to go into Internet Explorer again and I'm going to now browse the portal. localhost portal slash server dot pt and that's it. So now we have the Oracle Web Center interaction downloaded, installed, and configured and to get into it, we'd just go into, we'll type in administrator and no password. Now this administrator is a different user than what we use on the configuration manager. Um, just happens to be the same name, but it's not the same username and password. And I'll log in. And there we have it. Now everything is installed and configured for the base WCI.